Well, last week we talked about auto details. Uh, anyone get a chance to play around with that a little bit? No, I didn't get a chance. All right, so um, I, I changed my whole database around for it. Uh, of course, it's completely optional. You guys have been doing fine without it, but it really does help to uh, make standards that you can put on the server without killing yourself and making all these other little extra combinations of things. Um, so yeah, I converted this whole thing uh, even the the verticals, I didn't convert things like uh, brake shapes, the pocket fillers at the doors, that kind of stuff. I just left those as is. But you can definitely do it on those too if you're extra um, ambitious. Door heads you could definitely do as well, but usually there's no there's no need because they're the same everywhere. Um, yeah. Uh, if I was to continue with this project, I would. Um, I think I mentioned this before, I would add a tagline across here for the uh, moving splice. And then I would set up auto details that would go from, uh, well, I already have auto details from head to sill. All I would need to do is add uh, moving splice to moving splice with a different fab number. And it should take all those combinations together um, to make the sill to moving splice and moving splice to head for me so and then this elevation would be pretty much done uh, this one is already pretty close to done except for uh, because we switched these to rules none of these are triggering anymore because again to have rules or for auto cut you need something on both sides so this one doesn't have anything on the right side so i might need to make a a dummy tagline here just to get this to trigger the rules for verticals. So I could just copy this guy over here, change the name so it doesn't actually give me another vertical. It just gives me a, a tagline to trigger the rules on the on the horizontal tags here. Then this elevation would be done too. All right. So how do you do that so that it doesn't include it in the counts when it's uh, when it's running all the taglines and everything? Uh, I would so I'd copy this. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter where it's going to be. I can put it right there, and then I just change the name of this. Usually we call it like vert dummy because it's a uh, not a real vert. This has no data in my uh, UD window, so it won't count that vertical, but it will count these. These will pick up this line as if it was a normal rule and um, do its thing. So my UPD this. Well, my horizontal should come in. Now, um, half of my shear block clips here are gold colored because they are on the right side and they're not attached to anything, um, which there isn't much I could do about that unless I want to make a rule where um, we have a vertical, maybe this has a specific name. Maybe I make something like, uh, say horizontal, I would make, a, I could copy this. This is more than I would do, really, but you could do something like this. You could say horizontal vert dummy to vert dummy. And vert dummy to vert dummy has no shear block clips. But it has all the other parts. And with the same sort of adjustments as vert. So when I run this, um, it'll have normal vert on the left side, but it will have vert dummy on the right side. So all these clips will disappear. Um, should, if my AutoCAD doesn't crash. My auto 
Wildcat has crashed quite a bit. Just trying to set up this uh, meeting. It crashed that first day, and then it hasn't crashed since until today. I've had several through the course of this. Uh, I, I tend to get more of them than what you're getting. Yeah, I get a lot of reports of crashes, and then I can never reproduce them. And usually the person that finds them can't reproduce them, so they're pretty inconsistent. I, I, yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, um, system memory. And and, and and I know, like, if, if ever I have a... a items that are grouped and if I ever try to remove from a group to remove an item so to add an item to the group that would that one will crash a lot I know of one thing that definitely will crash you and I need to fix that it's um, when you run this the use layout here so if I clicked on this and I right. ran it but in, before I clicked on anything I canceled that crashes it 100% of the time um, and that's actually how I crashed it that one on that first day when I crashed. I hit cancel. And as soon as I did it, I knew, oh, oops, I shouldn't do that. And it crashed. And But this is the first time, at least in these lessons for me, that I've had AutoCAD crash. So I've been doing pretty good. And then, of course, this UPD just blowing up in my face right now. It's very strange. So I changed my horizontal so um, you can see if I refresh this, it created vert to vert dummy and it only has a shearbot clip on the left. So you could set up something like that. So then your shearbot clip count is correct. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, that seems like overkill to me. I, I would just sooner order the extra share block clips because this probably won't happen very often um and just yeah ignore the fact that i'm not having the right number of share block clips on the next elevation um you will have to do something and i don't know how often you guys do this we never when we were in autocad we never did did stuff like this where the elevation is actually on two different sheets like that 205 and 206 um, usually we'll draw the full elevation on one of the sheets usually the first one 205 so this whole elevation would live on 205 and then in this sheet it would just be x ref on here um, just so you can see the, the rest of it but uh so this vertical here um it needs shear block clips on the left side, inverted right there, um, and then normal ones here. But you're not going to get that unless you have those horizontal tags in there. Um, so I'd probably end up making a secondary tagline with just a shear block clip on it. Maybe stick it in this detail here. One for uh, upright clips and one for inverted clips. And then just have short little taglines here to put the shear block clips on this vertical correctly. Um, of course, if you just drew this in that other drawing, it wouldn't be a problem because all the tags would be there. So there's some extra work when a drawing is like this. Do you guys have standards for shop drawings regarding uh, elevations with match lines like this? Yeah, on the jobs I've worked on, I haven't really seen that, but I mean, it varies. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we never separate elevations like this. This would be, and it looks like there's a match line on this side as well. So this whole thing would be one giant elevation. Um, X reft into multiple sheets and then tagged all in one sheet. So wouldn't have to pull any of the weird trickery to get uh, things to be right. All right. Any other questions? So I really don't have any um, 
agenda for today. Today was just is just a um, ask me anything. So if you guys have things you want to ask me about anything about uh, specific things in the takeoff program, specific situations that you want to tag, uh, questions about how anything works, even beyond the scope of this class. Um, it's just pretty much a free for all day. And you can share your screen too, if you want to show me something, uh, whatever. If not, I can either let you go or I can show you some of the other little tricks for things like this, this mess of, uh, I have one idea. These, all these mark numbers are all on top of each other. I can go and fix that. I, I had a quick question. So sure. re reason I kind of, you know, I'm, I got behind and get to really play with the auto detail stuff is I have, cause I, where there's like different details in the vertical So I, I name them like vert one, vert two, vert three for the different details that have verts. So you'd, you'd really want to see that more uniform with just vert for all of them. Um, mm -hmm. and not not differentiate a name based on well because it's in a different detail or or situation that way it could the auto details could do a lot more of the work because because I I couldn't do the auto detail routine without going back and doing a bunch of renaming of you know going through all the tags and renaming a bunch of stuff and so yeah you know, that's kind that's kind of where I got a little bit behind there but uh but you you would recommend trying to stay as uniform as possible. With, yeah. within the conventions. Yeah, the, like this uh, job is a good one just to play with because we're not that far in it and it's pretty easy to just uh, pivot and change everything around um, to do auto details because it really is just like renaming a few uses and maybe some fab numbers. Um, hard to do it in the middle of a job, definitely, because once you start doing auto details in one place, you kind of won't need to rename a bunch of things and then it almost uh, snowballs. Uh, horizontals are a good place to start, um, especially if you have like a segmented wall that's like prime candidate for uh, for going to auto details and just trying it out because hopefully it can save you a bunch of time if your angles vary a lot. Um, verticals, it's not I mean, it works and it works fine, but it's not as clean on verticals. Um, it, I mean, they just don't vary as much. Usually with verticals, you'll have four or five different combinations on the whole job. Um, whereas horizontals, they could explode exponentially. So I, I try it on uh, maybe a fresh job with just the horizontals, maybe not even head and sill and horizontal, maybe just horizontal, something simple just to, just to see, but you'll find out that you, because of this name, you'll also need to standardize your names for your verticals. So it kind of does spread out throughout the whole job. And when you said you name them vert one, two, three, do you mean like the different combinations of verticals or different kind of details? No, I named them like where you had the, you had, you had do you have different where you have the, the different verts on attached to a different detail? I named I named them from each detail vert one, vert two, vert three, just so I could tell I could differentiate easily which one was which. And then I didn't realize that with auto details we we were going to need those uniform. So it kind of caused oh, a problem. Yeah. I have to go back and rename the data. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. And like for the for the horizontals, I had I had. Uh, horizontal one and horizontal two for the two intermediate horizontals, just so you could tell the difference. And I went back and renamed those. Um, so mm -hmm. I could do the clips and stuff, but you know, it's just, it was just the same thing. It's like, if, if it's not, I, you had it, you had them both sets of horizontals the same so that they would, so they would just be treated, treated in the auto cut as the same data. So yeah, I had to go back and rename those. Yeah. And Well, sometimes you do need them to be different. So say this uh, vertical here, we named these two verticals different, vert one and vert two. Um, you might need to do that because your horizontal needs to do something different when it hits this vertical versus this vertical. So sometimes you do want the names to be different. Um, and it's driven by the other parts in your job. So a good example is if this job had a horizontal with an extended cover as well, and maybe that extended cover was bigger or deeper, 
than the vertical one, you might want to notch the horizontal cover around the vertical cover, or you might want to run the horizontal cover through and let the, the vertical one stop short. In that case, you will want to have your horizontal on a different tag name than your other horizontals because you need the verticals to do something different. Um, or you need the verticals to be on different names because you need the horizontals to do something different. Um, that could have easily happened with this door also because sometimes the door just makes you do different things. If there was an extended cover here, um, it would run differently at this door location than it would over here. But because they're the same, I just ended up calling this one vert instead of giving it a different name. So uh, there's a little give and take there. It's not always like everything is generically the same name. Uh, you do need to pick your name so that you can control the other pieces that are hitting it in different ways. So pretty much anything that provokes a difference in some intersecting joint would need a different name. Right. For, for the sake of the exercise, I went ahead and named them different because I didn't know if, you know, we're going to end up having different notching coming in at a certain spot yeah. for, for based on the two different horizontals. So I separated them and it's like, okay, well, would have been beneficial to actually have them the same. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of a, kind of a choice that is, like, Oh, well, I got to go back and rework that. So. Yeah. And the takeoff program has a lot of those little choices, right? Where you pick one way and then you discover a little further down the job that that might not have been the best way to do it. And then you have to either go back and rework or just live with the choice that you made originally. Um, happens all the time. Any other questions? All right, well, if there's nothing else, we'll, we'll make this pretty short. Uh, I just wanted to show you some of the, the tools really quick for moving these, these mark numbers around because you have to do it a lot. Um, and it's really not, I mean, it, this tool isn't perfect, but it will get you more of the way there than we are right now. So, <laughs> Um, um, I haven't moved any of, well, I think I may have moved a few of them, but most of them are, haven't been moved here. Let me just reset everything. Let's erase all the mark numbers on this entire sheet and UPD. So you can see sort of the, uh, the base state of these mark numbers and they're all on top of each other and it's impossible to read. And I sometimes, I do LMS a lot just to make sure that um, now I don't have any of my shop use stuff, so I can see better what it's going to look like when it prints. But some of these things, um, I'd rather move around a little bit. Uh, I don't like these sills being here. I'd rather them be down below, say. Um, so we can set a default so that it goes to the correct place. So to do that, all I have to do is take one of them and move it. I'll just move it straight down to about there. And then there's a, uh, a, a command save default mark locations. So I'll select this mark number. So that saves it into the database. So now if the data, if you run UPD and all of these mark numbers are gone, the default location for that SIL mark number won't be above the SIL tagline, it'll be below it like that. And it'll always be like that. On all future sheets, it will just be below it. Um, that will probably be good here at the head as well. So let's do that one. Let's see if I can pick the head out there. So I'll move that up. Save default mark locations. Select the tag or the, the mark number and then I have to erase all these existing mark numbers and UPD. Now there are limits to this thing. Um, you can see all my heads are coming in automatically here. Um, so one of the big things with this is you only can, it only can save the location of the mark number perpendicular to the tagline. So if I wanted to say, move this thing down like that, 
so you could see the 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 T clip. It won't save that movement because I just moved it parallel to the tagline. So um, at least I don't think it does. Let's try it. Let's try a couple of these. I'm pretty sure that doesn't work, but let's just give it a shot. Save default. Save these two. That would be amazing if that worked. Oops. Let's get rid of these two. I'm pretty sure it doesn't save it if you move it in that direction. So yeah, see, they just went back. So it only works for movements uh, perpendicular to the tagline. So it would be good for this break shape here, which is ending up right on top of the taglines. Uh, I can move this out. And really, ideally, um, you would just you know fix your whole elevation, or maybe your whole sheet, like that, and then do that save mark number locations. And then the next time you um, encounter a new sheet, it will uh, be closer to what you had in the first sheet. And you wouldn't sit here in a race like I'm doing. I got a question. Is there, a, is, is there somewhere where all these custom commands are listed? Because I mean, I, I know there's some of the stuff that until someone tells me that it exists, I have no idea it exists. Like I've never heard that, that save default or save default tag locations until just now. Yeah, uh, it's relatively new. I just ran across it too when I was thinking about these mark numbers. I forgot I made it. <laughs> so sometimes I forget I write things too. But um, most of the things are up in the ribbon. Um, I think that one might actually be up here in the ribbon. Maybe not. Uh... Yeah, it looks like it's not up here. Yeah, I, I, tend, other... I, tend, I tend to try to not select things from the ribbon that I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, I know, but that's I'm, I'm, one of the unless only I'm, places. I'm okay with the, you know, the, the consequences of what it might be here. I, I don't use the ribbon either. You probably noticed that I never hit the ribbon when I was uh, working, unless it was some command that I was either showing you where it was, or usually I actually go up to the ribbon for the parts library because I don't type that out. But um. Uh, I do advertise some new uh, commands up here, though not very often. I don't make that many new commands for AutoCAD nowadays. Um, probably the best place is if you go to your takeoff program and you go to changes. On this wiki page, I put all the changes that I make, uh, both to the takeoff program um, and to AutoCAD, though if it's a AutoCAD change that affects people who work in the takeoff program, it'll be listed here. Um, this is, I probably shouldn't have called it takeoff and AutoCAD updates. It probably should have been like um, takeoff and fab updates and then this one's for drafters. So this one's more catered to shop drawing and drafting. But in here I list uh, new commands when I, um, when I make them. So if we do a search for uh, save default mark locations, it's here. Uh, came out September 2017. So if you're reading this, um, and usually I encourage you guys to read this when when the takeoff program tells you to update, there's usually some stuff here, and there that's when the new stuff, I mean, this is where I advertise new stuff. This is where I talked about auto details in here also. Um, some of this is Revit-oriented, but uh, like I think... Let's do auto detail. So there's a bunch of instances where I mentioned auto detail. Uh, that was probably it right here. Is there, where's the introduction of auto details? Yeah, right here. So this was September 2016. New auto detail feature that creates data and fab templates automatically by combine, combining source data and source templates into different combinations. 
source uses should still be named, should be named similar to sil v to v for vert to vert. Um, I found lately, I found that just having a little initials like that um, isn't the most readable. <laughs> so I've changed it now. Or you can still do this, but then your tagline has to be named v. It, it just turns out to be easier to just type out the whole name of the tagline. So vert to vert, corner to corner, and then it kind of describes it, kind of what it does. Of course, auto detail is kind of a big feature, so um, that that is better demonstrated in like a video than uh, just writing a bunch of text. But almost everything that I actually everything I do write ends up in this list somewhere. Um, all the commands are always this sort of font, where it's a uh, it's kind of a grayish color and it's a a fixed width font. Um, you can't use that to filter though, unfortunately. Draw parts, that's for uh, that's for making fab tickets, old style. Create tag drawing, that's a command for Revit stuff. Pretty much everything does list here. It's probably horrible if you try and go back and read through this. Um, you can certainly attempt it, but uh, I would just pay attention to it whenever there's an update. And I really don't put updates very often, usually once a month or something. Um, you can see what changed and if anything applies to you. But those are pretty much the only two places that any new commands show up. Always here and sometimes in the AutoCAD ribbon. I hope that helps. I don't know if it does or not. It does and it doesn't. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't help you if you don't know what you're looking for. If you're looking yeah. for something specific, you can find it that way. But if I don't know what auto detail is, like, I'm not going to search for auto detail. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, not, it's not maybe as you know, effective as if there was a list of commands that had their definitions of, hey, here's what this does, you know. Which you know, sometimes when you see the name of a fan, you go, oh, "That might be something that I could, that I could use." And then you can look at what it does, and then be able to know okay, what would be useful or not. But uh, you know, a lot of the things here kind of, it's it's kind of you know tribal information. It's passed from person to person, and depending on mm -hmm. if you, who you talk to, some one person may tell you about this thing, or 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 they won't, and someone else will tell you about this other thing. And it's like, okay, so un, un, unless you unless you someone tells you about it, you just don't know that it's there at all. Looks like new command is actually a pretty good search. I There was a uh, wiki page that just listed the commands, but I kind of fell off of that and then it got out of date. And then I really, really tried to put everything in the ribbon if I made a new command for something. Um, but yeah, there's still things that slip through the cracks like this default mark locations. Uh, number units is in the ribbon. I don't even remember what this does. Uh, that's in 2013, that's a hell of a long time ago. Oh, extrusion bounds, I forgot about that one. There's a command VP that turns the vports layer on and off, but I found that this crashes and I have no idea why it's such a simple command, but it will crash every once in a while. That, that one's usually worked for me. I haven't had that one crash. Hmm. Might just be me. Yeah, this, this one's kind of old. I think it, that one actually works. Um, really, there hasn't been too many. I don't want you to feel like you're getting left out. There aren't that many new commands that I've added. Um, we went through most of them in this class with the addition, like the BIM one uh, that saved default mark numbers. Uh, most things have, they're either like just right here in the takeoff program. Uh, there's not even, you can probably tell that this ribbon hasn't changed much either. Um, let 
Yeah, I probably need to do that. I probably do need to make a list of all the commands. Because it, it's not even so much necessarily new commands. It's commands that are there that have been there, mm -hmm. but just don't know how to look for them because no one's ever told me, hey, there, you can use this command. It's like, okay, you know. Like that Z-splice did, did, command? Didn't, didn't know it just in general, I mean, if, you know, there's, there's a lot of commands I don't know that could be useful because no one's ever told me to look for them, you know? Yeah, there's some commands I don't know either that Steve wrote. Um, we can try and go through some of those right now if you want. But, yeah, there's – he didn't make a master list of them. I started a list, but then I fell off of that. I think it is still in the wiki somewhere. Uh, and then there's this change log, which is sort of my uh, – my main source of information. Let's see if I can find the other one. Because the other one has some of the older commands. They're not new. They're just, they've just been there. Um, let's see if I can find that link. Takeoff program documentation. That's not it. Oh yeah, and then there's like O N and um, O P and Q V and all those commands too, huh? some of these yeah i don't know where that thing is i remember it used to exist i just don't know where it may have ran off to or if it was raced or something like that Some apps. Nope. Hmm. Oh, hey. This is the one that I was thinking of. AutoCAD enhancements. And through whatever, uh, there's a problem with the wiki page where tables like this are always cut off like that. Um, so here's a list of this table here has some of the commands that have been added to AutoCAD, but they're all relatively old. Um, these don't exist. And if they do exist, I don't know where the heck they are. Oh, that uses that old thing that I had. Uh, yeah, so this is a little out of date. A lot of these commands still work, though, uh, with the exception of these might still work also. I'm not sure. But um, all those open, next, QV, QVZ, all that stuff is listed here. Um, sometimes when you're doing uh, presentations, you like to switch to a white background or a black background. So white will just go to the white background in model space, whereas white one will do paper space. And then black and black one do the same thing just black. Z splice we went over in this class. Z detail. I don't even remember that one. I don't remember that one at all. Uh, QV. Uh, we also went over in this class. This J command um, was for embed blocks. Um, I don't remember exactly how that works. So there's a few things here. You could try these out. 
these all work that works these work um yeah and some of them are hidden definitely like z open setup is definitely hidden um, but our checkers use that one but yeah it is tribal knowledge you got this list you got the updates those are the only two lists that we have right now um and obviously a lot of things are missing the est command isn't even listed here um i'd say for most things though it's in the ribbon um you can explore here make sure you know what all these buttons do um you guys probably don't need these buttons because they're more for uh, pal schedules but all these other buttons are useful in some way um, both in the takeoff tab and the fabrication tab some of them are repeats from the drafting side um, and you don't have to worry about dies or sales probably this is for heather so uh, yeah i'd say that's all i've got i've got the ribbon it's sort of the primary resource of commonly used commands um probably the most commonly used ones then we have that list over on the wiki apparently under autocad enhancements which has some of those navigation things um, that we've added and then the update which should have everything it's just not in any sort of organized way but hopefully uh youtube videos like the ones that i've been making for this class will help dispel some of that um tribal knowledge stuff and there's a few more that i know about um, we could also go over right now as far as uh, getting around a fab ticket. There's some some things there that they're very simple commands, but they're uh, pretty handy for dealing with fab tickets. By the way, that save mark definitions is stored here in the takeoff program under edit mark locations. And this button has been there forever, um, at least as long as I've been working here. But it was kind of cryptic and people couldn't figure out what all these numbers were. So that's why I made the command. Um, but basically this is an offset distance from the tagline, perpendicular to the tagline. So you could set this up ahead of time. Um, you can see the defaults there. Um, and this, I shouldn't say this is a number of units. This number gets scaled by whatever the text size scale is. I think the dim scale in the drawing and stuff like that. So you could sit here and type in different numbers here and see if the tagline or the mark number ends up where you want it to be. Um, or you could just run that command I told you. But this was always possible, with, but it just didn't have an AutoCAD command. So just pick a random fab template. So there's a few useful commands for dealing in, um, actually I can do it right there in the BIM model, uh, for dealing with a 3D AutoCAD environment. Um, the ones I use a lot are UC, X, or Y, or Z. And all that does is it rotates around the axis that you specify 90 degrees. So UCX will rotate around that x-axis 90 degrees like that i could just keep hitting enter until i get my ucs where i want it to be you see y does the same thing around the y-axis and you see z which will go around the z-axis so i use those a lot um also ucw will go to world um really it's just saving you a couple space hitting spacebar a couple times um or typing 90 but those are pretty simple and easy to remember. Um, the other thing that a little more complicated are the VP commands. So VPI goes to isometric. VPP will go to profile, which is the same as 
Oh, wait, no. That goes to plan. So if you imagine this as a floor plan, it will go to plan view, which is looking down the z-axis toward x and y. Uh, if you do VPE, E is for end of the fab ticket. <laughs> I didn't make these names. Uh, these existed before me. So VPE is the end. So this will look at the end of the horizontals. Um, these acronyms make a little bit more sense in a fab ticket. And then there's VPF, which is look at the front. But with each of these commands, um, I usually use the view cube and then I mess with my UCS, but these commands will automatically put you in that view and put your UCS so that it's facing in that, that direction. So it can be pretty appealing if that's what you wanna do. Uh, so if I do VPP, see how my UCS stays with me. And then VPE, it's still there, X and Y. So it kind of does all those things at once. And then VPI doesn't mess with your UCS. It just puts your view back into isometric. And then I can do UCW to fix my UCS so it's at world again. So there's a load of quick commands. Uh, I don't use those VP commands. Uh, not sure why. I usually just stay in isometric. You probably noticed that in my videos. But um, there's a whole lot of people that use those here. What other commands? I can't think of any other takeoff or fab commands. I got another question. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, uh, so when I copied in some of the information for when we were doing the rules, um, so like uh, on the, the shear block clips and it brought in the, uh, the fab number and it's got one, one R parentheses R O R. What's O R stand for? O R is override. Um, the O is override. R means right. So um, I don't have those in here but we can look at it. Um, actually, that wiki page, the um, updates wiki page, it's on there. And oftentimes I go to the same wiki page to figure out what they are if I forget. Uh, I think they're called fab codes. Fab codes, yeah. Oh, those are the new ones. Um, I mean, for the most part, I've always used, you know, left and right and top and bottom, but I didn't really. Yeah, left and right are the. No, what the override. Maybe I should go over those two. I can't even find it in here. I mean, those. This is like the earliest one, but there's. I called it something else back then. Uh, um, oh, it might not even be, no, it can't be that old. Wow, where is it? Is it really that old? Or am I just like glossing over it? See, again, those, uh, these fab, they're called fab codes, all that stuff in parentheses after the fab number. Um, and I've added more and more to the list. Yeah, here we go. So it is old, super old from AutoCAD 20, 2006. Um, so the first ones, the first set of them were the LR and T and B top and bottom um, that you add to the mark number. And this explains what that does. Um, though this existed before the BIM command. Um, 
So it kind of does this, what it's describing here as far as attaching things left and right, but also tells uh, BIM which end of the tagline that fixed length parts are on. So um, it has additional functionality beyond what this lists. Um, then there's these OL, OR, OT, OB. So um, if you have one of those on your tagline, it forces the mark number to go to the other, it forces that part to be attached to the opposite side. Um, so for example, actually, I think I did use it here on, these, on this corner. So on the horizontal that hits a corner, I have ROR. So this tagline has three shear block clips in it. One normal extruded one. Wait, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, this is corner to corner. Uh, this has two shear block clips on the right side. Uh, one of them is just purely on the right side and it would show up on this vertical as being attached to the left side of the vertical. This one here, it would be also on the left side, but because I put OR in there, it's forced to be on the right side of the vertical. Yeah, that's where I got it was when I put in that clip that goes on the other side of that corner. So I put in the two the two clips that go on the left and on the on the side where the fab comes in, and then the one that's on the other side for whatever mm -hmm. that whatever that next uh, detail is that's going to be over there. So that, that's where I got it, and that's what I was curious. I'm like, I don't even know what OR stands for. And I didn't yeah, it's supposed to be override right. And you could also do override left, override top, override bottom if you need to. Uh, but usually it's always just R because it's on the right side of the, the horizontal tag and then override to the right side of the vertical. And then isn't there also like a mid one for like if you're putting like a channel or a reinforcement tube and you want to sit right in the middle of the fab? Nope. There is nothing that does that at all. Um, I, thought there, I thought there was like an M or something. Like that one. Uh, there's M's for miters. Uh, yeah. So if we go through this list real quick, um, I don't think the miters are actually here. Another thing you have are par parallel cuts. So if for this sill, for instance, if I put a fab code that said PL, it would cut the left side of this part parallel to the right side. So um, no matter what is on the left side. So it kind of just inherits, it makes the auto cut go across to both sides. That's what that parallel thing is. And I was anticipating people maybe using that for uh, shear block clips, where if you're gonna miter a shear block clip for this side, for the corner, you might wanna miter both sides of it to make a parallelogram. Uh, so that's what this was for. Uh, then there's also 90L, 90R, 90T, 90B. Those force that particular end of the part to be straight cut, no matter what's happening in auto cut world. So that's useful for, uh, for things that you may want to be auto cut on one side, but not the other. Um, can't think of a single <laughs> example where that might be, but um, you have that option. Then if we go to that other page, Fab code. Let's go to the end here. Then we added oh the 90 whatevers and P whatever fab codes affect the length. Um, so this is where I added the miter and tilt. So if you didn't want to use auto cut, you could type in your miter angles or tilt angles directly next to the fab number like this. So this would be a 45 degree tilt cut on the left. 45 degree tilt cut on the right. And that just kind of replaces whatever auto cut would figure out for the miter angles. And um, this fab would end up with an X00 whatever fab number with these two tilt cuts. Um, and you use T for tilt and M for miter. So you could put compound miters in here. If you just say like, say you want a 45 miter and 45 tilt on the left, you just list them all here, 45 ML, 45 TL, 45 MR, 45 TR, and it'll cut them all. Uh, that could be useful too. Um, this is usually used when you have to picture frame miter something, because when you're picture frame mitering, say covers, um, auto cut, there's nothing for auto cut to cut or to detect a 45 degree angle there unless you add a tagline. 
um, to cut something at 45 degrees, in which case auto cut kind of becomes unpredictable because you don't know what is actually going to cut the the parts and you also have to add extra ones because of the naming so vertical extended covers only get cut by can tags and horizontal covers only get cut by vert tags so you'll need a vert and a can that are at 45 degrees at each location so it gets kind of crazy um, but you could just use this to picture frame miter so, so when are we specifying, say, a tilt versus a miter? Would that be something like a like a lean back unit? Uh, so it, you got to look at the fab ticket. So this is a miter. Anything that you see in plan view is a miter. Um, I guess a miter always goes from the front of the part to the back of the part, um, in that direction. Tilt cuts. You always need that other viewport. To see it, you always need this viewport to see a tilt cut. You can also explore this. Maybe my best example here <laughs> is to just um, do this in the BIM model. So let's grab this guy and isolate him. Actually, let's grab both of these and isolate them both. So one of the features of the BIM model is it allows you to play with those fab codes, especially these miter and tilt ones, and see what you're going to get before you commit. So there's a fab number here. And if you mouse over it, you can uh, type in whatever you want. So if I start typing in parentheses and I do 45 miter, let's do right like that, and I hit Enter. Uh, see it? updates this so that it has that 45 degree miter. And if I'll do uh, 45 on this one at the bottom. 45 miter B. So it, it, un it unhit all of these things because they all have the same fab number, but um, so that's the miter direction. It's always from front to back, front to back. Um, if that wasn't the direction I wanted, I can just type in 135 here and the thing should flip around like that. So you can play around with the numbers like that until you see exactly what you want in the BIM model. And then once you do get what you want, you can just save this, save the BIM model and it will put it into your UD data, uh, just like attachments or any of those other things. If I wanted like a, I don't know, a 80 degree tilt cut on the bottom, add that on there. And now I got some weird compound miter. So if you know your angles, you could theoretically type them in here. Usually, especially for compound miters, they can get very difficult to know what they are. Um, so in that case, I encourage you to just use the uh, tag lines to do it. Um, but these can be useful for certain things, especially, like I said, the um, picture frame mitering. Uh, yeah, doesn't care about spaces. Um, and then these are actually fairly recent. This is 2017. Um, C, L, R, T, and B. So if you add that to a fab code, it will only pick up clips from that direction. So for instance, this door fab, this door piece, you'll want it probably to pick up the shear block clips coming from the right, but you might not want it to pick up shear block clips coming from the left. That would happen if it was like a, like a like a unitized system or something like that, where it's a split vertical and one of, one half of that split vertical you want picking up clips on the right, the other half of the split vertical you want picking up clips from the left. Um, you can do that with that CLCR fab code, which kind of filters the clips so that only things coming from one side or the other will get picked up and the other side is, is ignored. Now, this doesn't solve everything. <laughs> um, it 
can solve a bunch of things for certain situations, but um, you always have the other lever of just attaching everything manually together without using the clips and the attached checkboxes, um, which you probably should use in, in a lot of cases. Um, but if it does work out to be really easy like this, where you can just have it um, go left and right, then you could definitely use that. And that's it for fab codes. Had to search through here quite extensively to find them all. I'm hoping this miter thing actually helps you guys if you guys end up doing picture frame mitering around elevations, like punched openings. It's pretty cool. Anything else? Not that's coming to me off the top of my head. Uh, me neither. <laughs> Threw a bunch of random stuff at you. Like some of this stuff I don't even remember exists until I, you know, the situation that really wants it to be used comes up. Like the whole typing in miter angles in the fab number, I almost never do that unless I have some kind of picture frame mitering and then this would come up and then I would teach you guys it. But if it doesn't come up, I don't think about it either. That's why I ask some of the questions so they get on the video so I can yeah. review, the, review the video to figure it out later because I'm going to have to do a lot of stuff like just trying to follow along as you're doing stuff. If if we try and do it while you're demonstrating it, we're going to miss something. So I've been trying to yeah. view and then come back, go back and do everything later. Um, you know, but that's why that's probably the best way to do it too. Because yeah. I'll zip right by you if because I can't see what you guys are doing either, and I can't see if you're falling behind. So I'll end up just zipping right by wherever you're at, and you'll miss a bunch of stuff if if uh, you're trying to follow along. So yeah, if, if we look away because your your command line just shows the one line, so I can't. Yeah, I see hate that. I, <laughs> you can show more. I know. I this is a new computer. I haven't actually uh, <laughs> changed it yet. I, I always show five. I always show five lines, but when you, once you go past the command, if you've said it, and I was looking at something on my fab, and I look back, it's like okay, yeah. well, I like, probably should have done did, that. From did, the beginning. Didn't catch what what happened, but that's why you know that's that's why we can at least review these videos. You know, yeah, it's good to have good to have them there. I think I had the. Oh no, I didn't have dynamic input. I turned that off. I hate that thing. But uh, yeah, usually I have my command line spread out. It's just a new computer, so I hadn't actually thought about changing it yet. All right. Uh, we went over all these buttons. Um, this button's for Rick Janassi. It's not for you guys. Uh, uh, let me ask you this question. Um, what about... Um, I know sometimes here we have brake shape parts that aren't in the takeoff. Um, how do you, what's the best way to go about attach, if you have to attach like a brake shape that's not in takeoff to a part? Um, is, is it always is just no, add it to takeoff? I mean. Yeah, there's no good way to do it unless you add it to the takeoff, which is what I did here, even though these aren't actually attached. Um, You'll see, like we have even really complicated brake shapes that we're attaching um, in ACAD parts. Let me pull up a fab. So that's another feature I didn't go over. Hmm. Um, just thinking randomly. So at the on the W seventy five, there's um there's end dams that uh that look. Let's do the curtain wall one. They look like that. Actually, let's not do that one. Let's do the, the EDH. EDH one is better. It's even more complicated. So we have this crazy break shape. Uh, as an end dam on the stack joint on the W75 system. Um, we have modeled this in 
in the for the takeoff program so that it shows up in QBIM and shows up in the BIM model and so we can attach it together and it shows up on the head um, on the headpiece or the sill track or wherever else this these kind of things up here so yeah it's for smaller brake shapes like this not like giant panels or anything um, I'd say the best way to do it is to mo make an extrusion for it in your dies folder um, and then make a fab for it just as if it was a normal extrusion. Uh, put some crazy notch in it like I did here <laughs> to make it look like the brake shape that you're uh, looking for. Uh, you can see from this little picture here that the shape of this extrusion is that, that sort of T shape and just by adding all those notches, that's how I get this thing to look like uh, the way it does. Um, you can do that. There's also uh, other examples. Let's see, there's we used to use a brake shape for the uh, this BS90. We use use this on stick walls at corners before that other extrusion existed. The one that we used in our project with the uh, it's extruded. We used to use a brake shape like this, um, but you can see that this one also is modeled through the uh, through the BIM process. Now this one is a little different. There's a special way you can set this thing, something like that, up, because um, this one would be kind of a nightmare to try and make a notch that subtracts out and makes this thing perfectly. Um, so the alternative, and it is really a pain in the butt to do. Um, let's go to the parts library. So an alternative to naming your, to making a dies picture is you could, um, in your dies folder, you can make a solid. And I got a few of them here. So this solid, it's just modeled. It's just a normal AutoCAD solid. And it's put into the parts library under, I hope you can see the name because I have this weird thing in front of it for, uh, yeah, maybe I have to move it. You put it in your dies folder, you name it the part number, and then in parentheses, you put the fab number. That tells the takeoff program that this is not some kind of solid that, or some kind of uh, P line that it needs to extrude to make the BIM model. It's a solid because of the parentheses. So it'll just take this solid exactly like it is and stick it in your BIM model. And then after which you can, um, you can move it around in the BIM model to get it into the right place and have it make AP drawings. So you can use this technique for making weird break shapes. I avoid that wherever possible and try and make an extrusion. But if it doesn't make sense to make an extrusion, definitely go that way. And then your break shape will be in the BIM model and you can attach it to things. Just like I did the caps here. And just like the standard data on the server has those NDAMs in it. They're all really in the BIM model. What about with things like uh, reinforcement tubes? Ah, reinforcements. Um, those are probably, uh, I would probably also put those in there. Uh, depending on if they're shop use or not. If they're field use, if the field is going to be screwing these into the bar for whatever reason, I wouldn't put it in your fab template. I wouldn't even have it in the BIM model in that case. Um, that might end up, if it's a field use bar, it might end up in the, um, as a separate process. And then someone just comes in here and adds a text object on the appropriate layer to call out the mark number here. But if it's shop use, I would definitely add it to the BIM model. I would make um, in the dies folder. Uh, I would make the um, make a little rectangle or whatever shape it is, right here in Fab's dies for that steel piece, and then have it part of the BIM model and pre-attach it using pre-assemble extrusions, just like it was any other extrusion. Um, usually those kind of things are fixed length though, uh, at least for us they are. Usually we'll either get a 10 foot or a 12 foot or a 16 foot steel length 
that is supposed to be bolted into the middle of the mullion. Um, so they may be a fixed length part in here. You can even make, you can add it to your vert and attach it together with, with um, A parts. Just put it here, fixed length 12 feet, something like that. Just a bunch of different ways you can go about it. Yeah, we've had it both ways. I've seen it where we have it in, you know, in the vertical, and then we show you do a parts to show the, the distance from each end, and then or or we've just referenced the part on the on on the fab, and then shown uh, on the elevation, showing a a dimension to, you know, bottom of tube or whatever. Um, this may interest you actually. Just thinking about what you said about um, a parts and um, and showing the length or the location of it. Um, we can pret let's pretend like this filler here is a steel bar inside of this horizontal. And the steel bar is always some fixed length, say, because this thing is short. Let's just say it's two feet long, always. Um, this The mark number for the steel bar will appear here. But the location of it, I mean, you have some options. You could do a dimension, right? That goes like from here to here or, or some leader maybe that says that this thing is right in the middle of the horizontal. But you can also put a dimension, a dim A and use a little bit of a more complex kind of technique. So actually I'm gonna call it dim, dim X. That. And then in the A parts command, um, the column label will be dim x. And then for this, you can type in something like this, cut size divided by two. Uh, I said two feet long, right? So cut size minus 24 inches, right? I could put parentheses in here and divide by two. Yeah, it always does that, huh? Dim X. So you can put some uh, formula in here. The only variable that it recognizes is cut size or length or uh, cut length, I think. Um, it'll recognize sine, cosine, um, tangent, some basic math functions. Um, but you can put something pseudo complicated in here. Oh man, really? It did that because you didn't put the little uh, parentheses or the, the quote marks around your X. Really? No, it, it does it. I just have to do it again. Yeah. Anyway, Dim X, I'll save this. And then I'll do a preview fab ticket. So this one's 32 inches and 5 eighths. Minus 24 is, uh, what, 8 and 5 eighths. So, oh, wow, it didn't do it at all, did it? Boy, it just made me a liar. That should work. I always include the equals before the cut size. Oh, know. yeah, equals. Oh, you're right. It's just like Excel. You're absolutely right. The equals tells it that it's an actual formula. Let me go do that on the fab template. <laughs> yeah, that's probably important to put point out to everyone that you got to do it. That if you do it on, if you're on the uh, on the preview uh, ticket, you got changes aren't going to save there. You got to go back to the fab. Yeah, template and you can't make it. any of your changes on the tickets. Um, the only thing you can do on a ticket is the uh, attached parts, the AP drawings. Um, which you, I think you saw me in the videos do that quite a bit. Because I like to do this preview fab ticket. It shows me stuff here. <laughs> it, if, it, if there were AP drawings, they would all be listed here as can attach. And those are all saved in different files. So you could, you're free to edit those while you're in the ticket. Uh, but that's the only thing you can edit while you're in the ticket. So what did I say this was? This thing is 32 and 5 eighths 
minus 24. So that's like eight and five eighths divided by two is four and five sixteenths. So worked out perfectly. Um, so you have that option too. You can get crazy with it. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy, but um, I guess you could put like degrees or something in there and have some miter angle. And I don't know. I don't know what kind of crazy thing you might do there, but all it recognizes is cut size as a variable. So yeah, I completely forgot about that equal sign. All right, guys, we've gone kind of long, unless there's something else. Um, I don't mind going long, it's fine. If you guys have something, if not, call it. I'll, uh, I'll write a little outline of this and put it on YouTube as well, just like all the other ones. Um, I don't know what I'll call it. It'll probably be day, day nine miscellaneous stuff. All right, guys, that's the end of all the stuff that, well, it's not everything I know, but it's a lot of it. Um, when you guys get into Revit, we can do this again, add more lessons on the end of this for Revit stuff, because that kind of changes the game. But these fundamentals, they don't go away. Like even us in Revit, we're still, we're still dealing with taglines like this. We're still making our fabs exactly like I showed you. Uh, the only difference between Revit and AutoCAD is, uh, at least with Revit units, I draw all the taglines for you. Um, so you don't have to draw them. And I draw the whole unit for you as well. So that's the only difference. After that, it's all just normal tags and fabs and auto detail and that kind of stuff. All right, guys, have a good one. And I expect this video to be up probably later today. Thanks, Zach. No problem.